Setting up an endpoint with data store. In this module, we're going to build up our Flask endpoint to take in real data. We'll be creating a data store for our API, which basically handles the data for us. We're going to set up a method to insert data into the database and another to retrieve it. We're going to use the MySQL connector library to perform these actions. Let's create a file called reading.py. This file is going to contain an object called reading. This object will be the container that we use to hold and pass our data around. And here's what we'll put in it. As you can see here, we define an object called reading. It takes JSON input as an object. Then it assigns each of the values in the JSON file that we pass into the values of the reading object. In order for this to work properly, our JSON input object is going to have to be defined with the same values that we have defined in this reading object. You can think of this as a form. When you fill out a job application, for instance, you must fill out certain fields of that form, such as your first name, last name, address, things like that. The reading object is simply a paper form of an application. Every time we get a reading, we're filling out these forms with data from our sensors. And then these forms are stored in the database to be used later. So let's go ahead and save and exit this file. Next, we want to create a file called datastore.py. And what this will be is a data store for this endpoint. Now let's import some of the libraries that we're going to be using in this script. As you can see, we're importing sys, MySQL connector as MariaDB, and we're importing logging. Next, we'll want to set up some variables for connecting to the database. Remember those values that we put into MariaDB earlier? These are the values that we want to store in datastore.py. You'll want to replace these values with your database information, of course. Next, we'll create the MariaDB connection. As you can see, we're creating a MariaDB connection, and we're creating it with the values that we defined in the variables above. This will be the single connection that we'll use for all the methods in this module. Now, the first method we want to build is going to be called insert reading. As the name applies, it will be the method used to insert readings into our database. To start, let's define the method. By doing this, you can see we're installing the reading object we created earlier. We're taking whatever data that was put into that reading object and working from it within our method. Next, we're going to build a try catch function. And what this does is it tries something, and if that something fails, the catch will take over and attempt to send us data on what went wrong. This is called exception handling, and it's very important for your programs to run well. First, we'll try to create a cursor, then execute an SQL query in that cursor, and then we'll commit that data. Now, if everything works as planned, we're done here. Only these statements are executed and the program continues on through the process. If something fails, however, we're ready for that too. Here's the code that we're going to use to handle those failures. Go ahead and type this in. Now this exception code is only run if there's a problem. We can just use accept to catch everything that fails, but then we'll get a little more granular here as you can see. If MariaDB throws an error, we'll catch that and log it. If we get an IO error, we'll catch that as well. If any other problem happens, we'll try to catch that and log that error message. If any of these things happen, we'll return a false flag so our application knows that something went wrong. If nothing went wrong, we just default back to a true flag. Here's what the final method will look like. And this is the full method that we're going to be using in the application. Now this is a pretty concise and basic insert. For production uses, there are more precautions and data validation that you'll want to add, but for simple projects like this, this works great. Now the next method that we want to add is a getReading method. This method will get a specified number of records from the database. If you want to get the last hour, you can select 60. If you want a half hour, select 30, and so forth. Since we're taking these measurements at once a minute. So let's define that. And the first thing we'll do is create a cursor. This is the object that goes through the rows of data that are in the result set. Next, we'll create a query. 
Now this query may look a bit confusing. What we're doing is we're taking the last 30 entries that were posted and then sorting them in reverse order. The reason we're doing that is we want our temperature graph to go from left to right. So if we sorted it ascending, it would always be the first 30 records. Instead, we're going to take the last 30 records and then we're going to reverse them so that they're sorted ascending. Next, we'll create a blank variable to store our output. And then we're going to create a for loop that will iterate through the cursor. It will specify the data it wants to return by asking for the particular fields such as temp1, temp2, etc. We will then take that data and append it to our output object. And as you can see, this is just a simple for loop. Next, we'll close our cursor and return the output to where the function was called. Now this is the entire getReading method. It's a simple way to extract readings. The possibilities here are endless. You can find creative ways to get data just by modifying that query. So let's go ahead and save and exit from this file. And speaking of modifying the query, here we've created get single reading, which is essentially the same function. The only difference is this query. As you can see here, we're selecting star from weather reading where reading ID equals. This is so we can select one record for a specific ID. Now let's save and exit. In this module, we set up a data store for our API. We created a model for our data and created methods to insert and retrieve data. This serves as the base for our API, and in the next module, we'll build a controller to interact with it.